Welcome to the video series, Introduction to Processing. In this video, we'll talk about how to make a program's object-oriented, which is a powerful way to write programs. In the previous videos, we talked about how to make a ball bounce on the screen. We create some variables that represent the position, the velocity, and the radius of the ball. Then we initialized those variables in the setup method and also created a window of a certain size. Then in the draw method, we drew the background, then we drew the ball, then we move the ball by a certain amount, and then if the ball passes the right edge or the left edge, we change the direction of the ball so that it can uh, bounce back and forth. And this draw method runs continuously 60 times a second, creating the illusion of uh, animation. Uh, so this is what that looks like. Now we want to talk about how to write this program uh, in another way. Uh, one problem with this uh, code is that it doesn't scale nicely. What if we want a lot of balls on the screen, maybe a hundred balls or something? Then we have to do something like this, where we have to create the position for the first ball, the position for the uh, the position x for the first ball, the position x y for the first ball, the first ball's velocity in the x direction and the y direction. Then we have to repeat this over and over again for all the balls on the screen. And then we have to also, if we want to move the ball, then we have to write this very redundant code. We have to move the first ball, and then we have to move the second ball, then we have to move the third ball, and all this code is repeated and is very redundant. So in object-oriented programming, we want to combine the data or the state of the ball, which is the position, the velocity, the radius, uh, and its behavior, which is moving, bouncing, uh, displaying on the screen, we combine all those attributes and properties of the ball into one unit of code called a class. And uh, a nice thing about a class is that we will not have to um, repeat the same code over and over again. Instead, we can reuse our code instead of rewriting our code. And so, in this case, all these variables. Uh, including declaring the variables up above and initializing them and then drawing and moving and bouncing the ball all these will be refactored into another file entirely um, and this is called encapsulation so a class uh, is a template for a new type of objects it includes the, the states or given by the variables and the behaviors given by the methods common to all objects of one type. For example, if I were to create a car class, then that is a template for creating many car objects. So in object-oriented programming, uh, the philosophy is that our program should center around the interactions between objects. Uh, Java is object-oriented, and so the syntax for creating an, a class is you say class and then the class name followed by curly braces where in the body in between the curly braces is the body of the class so a class contains data which is the variables that represent the state or the data of the object it also contains constructors which are special methods that initialize uh, those variables uh, constructors have the same name as the class and then behaviors, which are the methods that give the object the, the functionality. Uh, these methods can change and access uh, the variables, and the objects allow uh, the methods allow the objects to interact with one another. And so let's kind of see how this works. So this is on the left is the uh, non-object oriented version of the bouncing ball problem, and then on the right. Uh, we're going to make this uh, object oriented. So these are the four variables position x, position y, velocity, and radius. Uh, those are the properties or the attributes or the data of the object. And so, uh, so on the right side, we're going to hit the, this arrow button, create a new tab. We'll call this the ball class. And then we can write, by, write the, the class by saying class ball and then open and close the curly brackets. And on top of the ball class is uh, all the attributes or all the variables of the the, the ball object. And so 
So here are the, the four variables. Uh, next, so those are called the few variables. And then uh, next we have the constructors whose purpose is to initialize those variables. These variables had, right now have been declared, but they have not been initialized. Uh, so the constructor's name is the same as the name of the class, which is bar. It is a method, so we have parentheses, open and close curly braces. And then in the constructor, we initialized these variables. So for example, uh, we can use this same code to initialize uh, the variable. Once we initialize the variables, then we, we can also give, uh, in fact, uh, now we can actually create uh, an object. So let's go back to the, the main uh, driver class here. Um, so now we've just created a type uh, in Java. and We can use it by declaring a variable of type bar called b. And at this point, we haven't initialized the bar yet. So in the setup, we're going to create a bar object by calling the constructor, we're going to call this constructor to initialize and create our variables. And so we're going to say new bar, calling this uh, constructor method, and that will create all, and initialize all the variables for the bar object. Of course we still want to do the size. Now in draw, we can now um, allow the, the bar to move, but at this point in the code we haven't have any behavior yet, so let's add a behavior. Let's let's do let's display the bar. So this is drawing the bar on the screen. So we take the, the draw code here and we're gonna move it over here. And so let's go back here and let's do the background. And now we can draw the bar by calling the display method and this display method belongs to the uh, the bar object so we're gonna use the dot notation we say b dot display and this will create the bar and then we're gonna keep displaying the bar so if I run it right now uh, it displays the bar on the screen okay let's add more behavior to the bar object and so now let's add the move method, this will allow the bar to move. So again, this is the code for moving it. We're going to move it over here. Now, we can go back to the main method and move this bar object. Here it is. Okay. Uh, one last thing is that we need to make it bounce so that it can go back and forth. So let's add another behavior. So all these methods are the behavior of the opt of the the bar class. So let's make a bounce method. And we go back and we're gonna call the bounce method b dot bounce and there's the final object-oriented version of the bouncing ball. Now you notice that in the main method, because we we factor all of these attributes and all of the behaviors of the ball object, we put all that into one unit of code called class. Uh, the the driver method, the main method here, is very very simple now, and it's actually very readable. Create create a ball reference, uh, actually create the ball object, and then um, allow the ball to interact by displaying it, moving it, and bouncing it. And all the details of the bar object is now abstracted away into the bar class. And so that um, if I create another bar object, for example, um, say B2, then notice I can, instead of rewriting the, the same code, of uh, as before, we can now reuse this template by na by uh, simply calling again display move and bounce. And notice that uh, the bar the B object has its own version of display. 
uh, the B2 has its own version of display and instead of rewriting the code we are now reusing the same code that we wrote in our template now the problem with this is that if I were to run this code right now we see that it's still only one bar even though there's supposed to be two bars and the reason is because uh, our constructor, the way we initialize the variables is done uh, by putting it in the center of the screen with a certain velocity and radius and so when we create two bars um, calling this same constructor will put the bar at the same position and have the same behavior and so they overlap and so constructors can be overloaded so in other words we can create multiple constructors so here's another constructor that allow us to say uh, create a bar at a different position so let's say float uh, x y for the position x speed and then the radius okay so uh, in this constructor notice that we can uh, instead of creating it at a certain one position we can create it at a position that is given by the input of the constructor and so we can say for example that uh, position x we're trying to initialize these variables up here so position x is now equal to x position y is equal to y position uh, the velocity x is x speed and then radius is equal to r and so this allows us a second way to uh, to create the ball object so now when we go back to the the main uh, program we can create the ball at a different position say 100 200 we'll give it uh, a, a certain speed say 4 negative 2 and then when we run this then we just created two bars this one is actually very small let's actually make it so that's not so in fact uh, let's go back to this um, oh yeah so that th this is the radius so this is actually we want to make this to be a little bit bigger so say uh, 30 so this is the x position this is the y position this is the uh, x speed and then this is the radius according to the order of our second constructor here so if I were to do that then now we created two bars that are a different position moving at different speed and that's how you uh, make a program uh, object oriented okay thank you for watching